Moments ago, I spoke with Kellyanne Conway, counselor to the president, about that and a few other big topics tonight. Good evening, Kellyanne. Good to have you here. Good evening, Martha. Um, so Thank what you. was the reaction and what kind of new legislation or, you know, new moves is the president proposing here? Well, Martha, as you know, the polls show a vast majority of Americans are against late-term abortions. They're certainly against what Dr. Kermit Gosnell did, which is murdering babies that are already born. I believe that it's Democratic governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam, who really injected this into the public consciousness within the, the last few months when he said on the radio show that sometimes after the baby is born that you keep the infant comfortable and then you confer with the woman and her physician as to what to do next. So that's post-birth abortion. And it's outraging, even people who call themselves pro-choice. They are against late-term abortion. They're against abortion for sex, sex selection purposes. Uh, past 20 weeks, for example, past the point where nonpartisan physicians and scientists say a baby can feel pain. Yeah. And I believe it's President Donald Trump who, on October 19, 2016, in that final debate in Las Vegas against Hillary Clinton, really got this conversation started in earnest and it brought us to where we are now, the screening of Gosnell in his White House. Why? Because he was asked a question about abortion, and he turned to Hillary Clinton and he said, no, you're the extreme one on abortion. You are. Because you would rip that baby out of its mother's womb an hour before it's born. And I think many people in America collectively went, ooh, and now they're realizing it is done. But and it's often done you, by Planned Parenthood where, where they get a half a, well, half a billion dollars a year in taxpayer money and give all their money to Democratic candidates. It's outrageous. Let, let, let's play a moment from last night because I asked, we asked Howard Schultz this question. We asked Bernie Schultz this question as well about, you know, up to the last minute abortion, which he said was not a huge problem and it was political because it's rare. Watch this. With regard to abortion, do you believe that a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy up until the moment of birth? Look, I think that that happens very, very rarely, and I think this is being made into a political issue. How big of an issue do you think this is going to be? And again, specifically, what legislative moves is the, does the president want to see? What action are you taking at the White House? It's a huge issue, Martha, because you heard the crowd there, too. They don't even like when the, when the question is raised because they know it's a losing issue for them. The legislation that the Democrats voted against recently again and again is called the Born Alive Abortion Survivor Protections Act. Let's quickly break that down. Born Alive, everybody knows what that means. Abortion Survivor Protection Act for all the gobbledygook and gibberish that comes out of Capitol Hill that we can't understand what the bill is about. This one's pretty straightforward. You survive an abortion, you're born alive. The government should be protecting you, should be giving just reasonable standard of care that we would give to any infant that's alive or any individual that's alive. The Democrats, including Bernie Sanders, vote against that. So that is unconscionable to many Americans. And we will continue to fight for reasonable restrictions and regulations okay. that, that, that are in line with, um, with a country that should value life. I want to get two quick topics in with you here. This is Bernie Sanders last night on the question of how you pay for Medicare for all, which would be essentially free, according to Senator Sanders. Let's watch. Oh, he has so go. many email questions. Okay. Sanders, how he is Fair enough. I got it. So if you're asking me, if your question is a fair question, are people going to pay more in taxes? Yes. But at the end of the day, the overwhelming majority of people are going to end up paying less. All right. So he's going to have to defend his program there. But what is the White House? What is the president going to say on this? Because a lot of people criticize Republicans. They say you don't like ACA, but you really have not come out with something that is that passed that could have passed that would fix these problems. Well, the president, as he said earlier this month, Martha, that he wants the Republican Party to be the party of health care. First of all, pre-existing conditions will be protected, non-negotiable, dead stop. Uh, but he doesn't want, the president doesn't want 180 million Americans who currently have private insurance to lose it, as they would under Medicare for all. Also, the president believes that health care in this country should not bankrupt the individual, and it should not bankrupt the country. Bernie Sanders has no idea how to pay for that except to increase taxes, and that means it's not going to be free. This is about free stuff versus freedom. 
And the president also, um, just look what he's done successfully by stabilizing. Ironically, he stabilized the Obamacare exchanges through the Associated right, so he's Health gonna, Plan. He's going uh, to protect pre existing conditions. 100%. And, that's gonna, and also try to bring down the cost of, of pharmaceuticals yes, and health care. So we'll be watching. Medicare for all means choices for none. Medicare for all versus health care for you. And the president's vision, health care for you, shores up, protects, and expands the, the Medicare that the 60 million seniors and disabled currently rely upon. That would be yeah. completely gone. Try well, we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about completely gone on uh, a lot. And we I think the whole thank the whole you. country hopes hall. that both people, thank you, um, come up with some actual solutions that will yes. make it cheaper in this yes. country. Um, before I let you go, stories today about people fearing the wrath of President Trump because their names are gonna be exposed in this Mueller report when it comes out in terms of what they told the investigators about what was going on behind the scenes with regard to obstruction. Um, it, you know, what do you say to that? What's the president's attitude right now? He's been tweeting a lot about this. How is he feeling about this report coming out on Thursday? Well, we know how we already feel, which is no collusion. That was the central premise in the investigation. And uh, I don't know what's in the report. We'll all see it when everybody else sees it. However, Martha, I, I would say that the, that's sort of the latest iteration of the palace intrigue stories that the media, the mainstream media, tend to love to run around here. It's easier than doing what you and Brett Baer did last night, which is have a town hall about issues, which is ask the tough questions, try to find solutions to America's problem. They'd rather just try to pit us all against each other and the president against current and former and future staff. Um, I can tell you that we're not looking at it that way at all. But in those 400 pages, we know what does not exist in its collusion. And let's face it, that was the central premise we'll that see. a campaign I ran into a successful finality that, that, that Donald Trump won fairly and squarely was somehow in a criminal conspiracy with Russians. That's the big lie that was allowed to let fly. We wasted right. $25 million we'll, we'll in 22 what it, months. As you say, we'll see what not it says on, on Thursday. It. It, in two words, will the president speak after the report comes out? I'd expect. You expect he will. Okay. Those are two words. Thank you, Kellyanne. Good to see you, you tonight. Thank you very Thanks. much. Take care.